at the same time, this acknowledgement that they, they didn't really treat you the right way. And they're starting to understand the connection. However, I think it might be a little too late because you have the chariot card and the moon card, almost as if you knew that they're, you knew what this deception was all along. It was in your field of consciousness. And you jumped in your chariot and you're like, peace. Hi, Aries. This is your love reading for December 2020. Thank you for joining me. My name's Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. And it is the day before Thanksgiving. I hope you all have a little break around this time to be with your friends and family and to give thanks, essentially. I know that I am thankful for you watching this video right now and also very thankful for your support. So if this reading resonates, please hit the like button, consider subscribing to my channel, and if you're looking for further guidance or insight on your own particular issue, there is a link below in the description box. You can schedule a reading with me. I would love to read for you. Okay, so I've been shuffling your cards off camera. I'm going to give them one last shuffle and uh, let's sync up. I'm going to cut the deck three ways. We're going to look at you, what you're bringing to the table. We'll look at your connection, what they're bringing to the table. We'll look at the composite energies, and we will also look at the insight. All right, so this is you and what you're bringing to the table. Ooh, got some secrets, something hidden, some deep emotions or subconscious motivations. That's you, what you're bringing to the table, the moon. Oh, shit. <laughs> Aries, this is what they're bringing to the table. Talk about something hidden. This is a deception. This is a sneaky move. Did they sneak off with something? Now you're reflecting on it. Composite energies, temperance. This is good. This is healing, balance, moderation. This is what happens when the two of you come together, when you blend energies temperance. It's a blending of diverse energies. There needs to be some sort of coming together inside of balance or equilibrium in order to right this tricky move, this deceptive behavior, this deception, this manipulation. This is the insight. Yeah. This is collaboration or lack of collaboration. We'll clarify working together on something or finding it difficult to work together on something. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Came out with the moon and the seven of swords. Come on, Aries. What's going on in December? How do they see you? What's their perception of you? Ooh. The chariot. Either they want to move forward with you very quick, strong, and confidently, or they see you as capable of such, of such movement. He is very studiously observing her. And she is sleeping. Look at that, like, phallic whip he has. Yeah, so they perceive you as the chariot, moving forward confidently, strongly. How do you perceive them? What's your perception of them? What they're bringing to the table is seven of swords, sneaking away, a deceptive move, strategic planning. Did they leave suddenly? Did they take something of yours with them? This is a transgression, four of pentacles, a holding on, a resistance, a retraction, and also a transgression. What the hell did they take? I don't like that. Uh, let's go with the Rider weight. Let's dig a little bit deeper. What is this transgression? What is this manipulation? What is this deception? Let's bring it to light, shall we? <laughs> Good 
could be that they they pulled a move on you and you were like, oh, hell no. And you jumped in your chariot and you got the hell out of there. <laughs> this moon energy that you're bringing. Ooh. You don't look happy about it. Four of wands or three of wands. Looking often off into the distance, looking away, looking at the horizon with your back turned. That is to further clarify the Seven of Swords. Turning your back, looking in another direction, the transgression, the deception. Did they look somewhere else to get something satisfied? More on this transgression, please, on the deception. The Three of Wands. Did somebody look somewhere else? Turn their back on something? Make plans for something else that didn't involve you? Oh, yeah. Four of Swords. A separation, a recovery after a betrayal. Okay, well, I mean, it just keeps getting worse <laughs> as we pull these cards on your connection side. <clears throat> we have a sneaky move, some sort of deceptive act. We have a transgression. We have a turning of one's back and looking in another direction, looking elsewhere. We have a period of recovery after a betrayal. It's like a death. It's like a mini death. On your side, we have the moon and we have the chariot, two major arcana cards. So for you, this has some sort of significant impact and probably will lead to a transformation in your life of some sort, of some magnitude. Moving away strongly, confidently, powerfully from what is hidden, what has been hidden. Not all the information is known. But look, at, I want to bring your attention to the, the expressions, the facial expressions in this card. Look at the moon, first of all, like pissed off or frustrated or determined, like it's like a frown. And look at the, the expression of aggression on that gold wolf. Like, burying its teeth. Like, ah. <laughs> Is that how you're feeling, Aries? Wow. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> let's pull some Hidden Truth Oracle cards. Let's see what they have to say to you. What do they have to say to Aries? What needs to be said? What needs to be known? Oh. <clears throat> I don't react when people mention you. Yeah. Stone cold. Acting as if it doesn't bother them. I wish I had treated you better. I'm starting to understand our connection. Maybe a little too late since you have the chariot. Um, let's clarify the temperance card and your composite energies. This is what happens when your energies come together. Moderation and balance. Also has a triangle. The angel has a triangle on uh, his or her gown, which is a symbol of harmony. And um, the triangle, it's been said, is one of the most powerful structures. Power and harmony. One foot in the water, one foot out. Blending energy from cup to cup. Blending different elements. It's like alchemy. Uh, leading to illumination. We see the sunrise in the background and we see uh, illumination around the head of the angel. The world, a completion. Taking it from one level to the next. 
next leveling in terms of your spirituality, a spiritual next leveling, a cosmic leveling up. This can be seen as a victory and an achievement. That's what it feels like when you get the world card. Like that's what it feels like when you're at this place in your life. Like I've achieved something significant. So yeah, um, when the two of you come together, there's temperance, there's moderation and there's balance and there's completion. There's victory and achievement. There's taking it to the next level. It's really interesting. I'm starting to wonder if all of this ne intense negative stuff in your connections, on your connection side, is in his or her past. I don't know. Only you know. Everybody has a different story. Um... That's interesting. Let's keep going. When the two of you come together, you get the world and you get moderation and balance. You get two major arcana cards. It could be that this has taught you a lesson or is teaching you a lesson. It could have been the trigger for you to, to, to grow spiritually. I mean, that's what relationships are, right? Um, and then we have the nine of pentacles, further clarifying the world and the temperance card. Somebody is single. Somebody has gained their independence. Somebody has really stepped into their independence, an energy of abundance, um, self-sufficient satisfaction. Nine of pentacles is the single lady card, composite energy. Let's look at the three of pentacles in the insight. There's some sort of lesson around collaboration. <clears throat> Five of Swords. This is a win in vain. Somebody won something, but it doesn't feel satisfying because it was a win without, it was a victory without compassion, a victory without empathy. And yeah, this guy's holding all the swords. But look at the people he hurt. And he hurt them just so he could hold all the swords. And I wonder if that feels good to him in the long run. That's clarifying this lesson around collaboration. Oh, come on, man. Good Lord. Ugh. Let's focus. Cards. Okay. Hmm. What I see here is a singularity and a collaboration. What does it take to make this thing happen? That interplay, that, that exchange, that interplay between independence singularity, and teamwork, working as a team, collaborating with others. Again, a singularity and a study, a research of something, working really hard, burning the candle at both ends. Something wants to come into fruition here in the insight. And there's this conflict between collaboration and do, going it alone, doing it alone. More clarity around the insight, please. The three of five and an eight. Aries. This is an interesting reading. There's some disparate energies here between you and your, your connection. And there's some similarities, the moon and the seven of swords. Ooh, what was that? Ooh, page of swords. Again, singularity, independence. This little dude is pretty immature, impulsive and rash. He says things, he's kind of petty. He says things that hurt and he kind of likes it. He kind of likes when it hurts. These are like little verbal jabs, right? He's also a researcher. 
He's also somebody, this is called the spy card. So somebody who is spying on you, watching you, watching your social media, observing you. We have a lot of cards of observation <laughs> happening here. Uh, <laughs> really studying something, studying something. This is the spy card, the, uh, the observer, spying, watching without your knowledge. So both of these cards have to do with the academy, the university, college, higher education. Could be that one or the other is at university, in college, studying something. There's this play on collaboration versus I'm going to I'm going to do this my own way. Somebody who doesn't really know how to collaborate or want to collaborate, mind you. Let's recap. Some sneaky moves, some transgression, some turning away and a forced recovery or a mini death of sorts on the side of your connection. They're saying, I don't react when people mention you. Like I stone cold, like you didn't, you're not going to get a reaction out of me where it comes to you. At the same time, this acknowledgement that they, they didn't really treat you the right way. And they're starting to understand the connection. However, I think it might be a little too late because you have the chariot card and the moon card, almost as if you knew that they're, you knew what this deception was all along. It was in your field of consciousness. And you jumped in your chariot and you're like, peace. <laughs> and you took your chariot to the next level or your chariot took you to the next level, a spiritual leveling up, balance and moderation in a fundamental way. And independence, single lady card. Emotional satisfaction able to generate a great deal of wealth and abundance around you and knowing how to enjoy it. And then in the insight, we have this interplay between collaboration and singularity. Somebody wants to collaborate. Somebody wants to do it on their own, go their own way. Somebody might be in university at college, actually studying something. Somebody might be spied upon by this guy who brings a very immature, petty energy. This is a win in vain. Somebody won something at the expense of others just so they could collect all the swords. Whew. Let's pull a card of guidance for you, Aries, as you navigate this connection in December. A card of guidance for Aries, please. What do they really need to know? There we go. Swan. Oh. 39. Nine plus three. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Two plus one is three. Three. Remember when we were talking about the triangle? Three sides. Harmony. Three is harmony. Let's read about Swan. Grace. <clears throat> Make sure you can see that. So it is that we learn to surrender to the grace of the rhythm of the universe and slip from our physical bodies into the dream time. Swan medicine teaches us to be at one with all planes of consciousness and to trust in great spirit's protection. If you pulled swan, it ushers in a time of altered states of awareness and development of your intuitive abilities. Swan medicine people have the ability to see the future, to surrender to the great power of great spirit, and to accept the healing and transformation of their lives. The swan card is telling you to accept your ability to know what lies ahead. Remember when I said I have a feeling that you kind of knew about this deception because the moon card showed up in your place? Eee. 
The swan card is telling you to accept your ability to know what lies ahead. If you are resisting your self-transformation, relax. It will be easier if you go with the flow. Stop denying that you know who is calling when the phone rings. Pay attention to your hunches and your gut knowledge and honor your female intuitive side. Yeah, you knew something about this person before they even brought it to the table. And the lesson, there's a spiritual leveling up. You're taking it to the next level. There is healing here. The lesson is to trust your gut. You have the ability to see the future. Listen to your intuition. There is healing happening all around you. Accept the transformation. Wow. All right, Aries. If that resonated with you, hit the like button. Also, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to explore more of this on a personal level, in a personal reading, there's a link below. I would love to read for you. Have a great Thanksgiving. Take good care.